Hello learners. Pleasure to continue with our series called Chemistry of Gases. This video presents gases in nitrogen and its compounds part 1. Welcome. Gases discussed in this very long form 3 topic include the following we have nitrogen gas nitrogen 1 oxide gas nitrogen 2 oxide gas nitrogen 4 oxide gas ammonia gas and finally nitric 5 acid which we shall treat as hydrogen nitrate gas dear learners due to the high number of the gases that we've just listed that are supposed to be discussed in this topic we have decided to divide our presentations into three parts part 1 shall discuss lab preparation procedures and uses of nitrogen gas and nitrogen 1 oxide only in part 2 we shall have similar presentations for nitrogen 2 oxide and nitrogen 4 oxide the final part will have a presentation on ammonia and nitric 5 acid and so we begin with nitrogen in the laboratory nitrogen gas can be isolated from air and what we are saying is that when you remove oxygen which forms about 21% of air by volume and carbon 4 oxide which forms about 0.03% of air by volume then the remaining part of air is mainly nitrogen which we know occupy 78% of air by volume so here the setup will be as follows we shall have an aspirator on the left hand side aspirator here is simply a large bottle that contain air so when we pass in water water is going to displace air that was inside the large bottle and force it through the apparatus then in our wash bottle too we shall put in our strong alkali this is potassium hydroxide what it does is to remove our carbon 4 oxide of course the equation for the reaction would be potassium hydroxide would react with carbon 4 oxide and we shall form potassium carbonate and uh, some water of course this happens when we bubble our carbon 4 oxide just for a short time now if we continue with the setup for quite a long time then as we discussed in form 2 our potassium carbonate solution would react with water and more of the carbon 4 oxide gas that we continue to bubble and we shall end with a final product of potassium hydrogen carbonate we shall balance with a 2 on the potassium hydrogen carbonate so these two are the equations for the reactions that take place in our wash bottle which contains our alkali why we are doing this is to remove carbon 4 oxide from air next step 
is to remove oxygen and in our combustion tube here we shall pack some copper tannins the copper tannins would react with oxygen in air to form our copper 2 oxide of course the observations will be brown solid changing to black solid after that reaction has taken place in the combustion tube so basically once we've removed oxygen and carbon 4 oxide we shall mainly collect nitrogen here over water now this nitrogen that is collected here is called atmospheric nitrogen it still has the noble gases mainly argon it also has some water vapor which we are yet to remove so one property of atmospheric nitrogen is that it is denser than pure nitrogen let us now have a look at how to isolate nitrogen from air on industrial scale industrially nitrogen is isolated from air by fractional distillation of liquefied air so the processes that are done are summarized in the flowchart below so we shall have air being sucked into our distilling plant at this point the air is filtered and purified where we shall remove dust particles and any other solid impurity from there we shall pass air through a strong alkali here we are using sodium hydroxide solution so as to remove carbon 4 oxide once that has been done we shall cool air to about negative 25 degrees celsius where water vapor shall be removed in form of ice now why we remove water vapor and carbon 4 oxide is that at low temperatures these two substances will have formed solids water vapor would have formed ice and carbon 4 oxide would have formed solid carbon 4 oxide now in our distilling plant we are using very tiny pipes these pipes would be blocked if these two substances are not removed early enough before the air is turned into liquid of course dust particles would also block these pipes because they are also solid now once we have done so air is then compressed and expanded repeatedly this lowers the temperatures further so when we do further cooling our gas or rather our air will change into a liquid the liquid air is then subjected to fractional distillation where nitrogen gas of course pure nitrogen gas would distill off first the boiling point being negative 196 degrees celsius nitrogen gas is followed by argon which distills off at negative 186 degrees celsius and oxygen distills last at negative 183 degrees celsius this summarizes the industrial isolation of nitrogen from air let us now look at laboratory preparation of nitrogen using chemicals nitrogen is prepared in the lab by heating a chemical that is called ammonium nitrite now ammonium nitrite is usually obtained when we heat a mixture of ammonium chloride 
and sodium nitrite. So the setup is as below. We have our mixture being placed in a round bottomed flask. We heat it, nitrogen comes off and then we collect it over water because we don't need it dry. If needed dry, we would actually dry the gas by passing through concentrated sulfuric 6 acid and then we would collect the dry sample in a syringe. When it comes to the equation for the reaction, we have ammonium chloride, aqueous, reacting with sodium nitrite. Of course, this is through heating. We obtain ammonium nitrite and sodium chloride. The moment ammonium nitrite has been formed, it is decomposed by heat further and we obtain our gas, nitrogen and some water. These we balance with a two on water. So these two equations can be combined into an overall equation. So we have an overall equation where we have ammonium chloride reacting with sodium nitrite and we end up forming sodium chloride. We form water and we also form our nitrogen gas. So if you combine these two equations here, we shall obtain our overall equation. And of course, we balance with a two on water. So that is how we prepare nitrogen gas in a laboratory setup. Before we move to nitrogen one oxide, let us have a look at uses of our gas, nitrogen. Nitrogen is mainly used in the manufacture of ammonia in the harbor process. It is also used as a refrigerant. And here we have a specific substance that is semen. Because of the inert nature, Nitrogen can actually store semen for quite a long time to be used for artificial insemination. We also use nitrogen in bulbs. With that, let us now cross over to the first oxide of nitrogen called nitrogen 1 oxide. Nitrogen 1 oxide is obtained in a lab setup by heating ammonium nitrate. Now we shall heat it in a round bottomed flask and collect our nitrogen one oxide over water. This is made possible because as much as the gas is fairly soluble in water, we can still collect it by over water. The equation for the reaction is ammonium nitrate, this time we are using the solid form, would decompose on heating to give us nitrogen one oxide gas and two moles of water. Now it is worth noting that there is danger of an explosion in our round bottomed flask, especially when the quantity of ammonium nitrate remaining in the flask is small. To prevent this, we usually heat a mixture of ammonium chloride and potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate as a safer method of obtaining nitrogen one oxide. So when we heat the two, the equation for the reaction now becomes ammonium chloride 
reacting with let us use potassium nitrate for this now we shall obtain ammonium nitrate and potassium chloride the moment ammonium nitrate is obtained it shall decompose when heated and we end up getting our nitrogen one oxide and water of course still two moles and now we can still go ahead and have an overall equation for the two reactions so overally heating ammonium chloride and potassium nitrate would actually give potassium chloride nitrogen one oxide and two moles of water so that becomes our overall equation so far so good learners let's now end our short video by looking at uses of nitrogen one oxide gas nitrogen one oxide is used as an aesthetic in medicine and dentistry this is made possible because the gas when inhaled makes the patient to be insensitive to any pain we also use nitrogen one oxide in rocket propulsion as an oxidizer to the rocket engine we also use nitrogen one oxide of course when mixed with oxygen to produce a flame that is usually used for analytical work in science laboratories this marks the end of our short video where we have taken you through lab preparation procedures and uses of just two gases discussed in nitrogen and its compounds kindly join us in the next videos where we shall have presentations about the other gases discussed in the topic